Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sean Purgal. I'm an osteopath and today I want to speak with you how you can find a salivate position as a manual osteopath, as an osteopathic manual practitioner inside an osteopathic physician's office. By osteopathic physician, I mean those doctors in the United States that practice uh, medicine and they are similar to medical doctors. What I will teach you, you can actually uh, apply it to medical doctors in other countries like and areas such as Europe, Canada and elsewhere as well. But this is mainly for osteopathic physicians now that I want to speak with you about. Now, I want to tell you I personally do not like you working as, a, as an employee. My students know that I will be very disappointed if after five years I see you are still working as an employee for somebody. To become rich and wealthy you have to have your own business. Having said that, there are times that it is necessary for you to work as an employee if you want. Uh, if you're a new graduate, if you have no experience, if you're traveling from another country to United States and you don't have your green cards, you don't have your permanent residency, you have no choice but to work as an employee because they won't give you a visa even though you can register a clinic and own your own business in the US, you will not be allowed to work inside your business uh, until you have a work visa uh, or on, until uh, you get the appropriate permits. But uh, if you get a work visa in the US as a foreigner, it means they have to hire you as an employee. They cannot hire you on a commission-based, uh, commission based, which is very popular in Canada and elsewhere. Uh, a lot of manual osteopaths work for clinics. After graduation, they work on 70, 30. Manual osteopath gets 70%. The clinic gets 30%. That w will not work if you're going to Emig uh, emigrate to another countries. Those countries like Canada and US require the employer to pay you a salary. This is done to, to stop abuse of the employees to make sure uh, those uh, immigrants who come have a, a basic salary to survive in that new country. So how do you go about doing it? Before I uh, go into that I want to give you an example. I had this friend uh, Dr. Nessa Fernandez, a medical doctor in Canada that I worked for him for a while, uh, one of my first jobs in, uh, as a chiropractor. At that time, before I became manual osteopath, I was a chiropractor. Uh, and um, at that time, there was something call, was called OHIP, uh, OHIP physiotherapy treatment uh, for, med for medical doctors. I think there, it was called G-Code Clinics or something like that. The license was selling over a million dollars and the medical doctor, they were, the government only, only would give that license to medical doctors and those who had it could easily make between half a million to a million dollars per year from that. I offered to buy that license from my friend for $600,000 and he said no. That was the last year uh, that that uh, G Code clinics were in business, and I'm so glad I did <laughs> that. That uh, he said no. Imagine that if I would have bought that license, and then then uh, a year later that license would have been revoked, and I could not own a G Code clinic uh, in Canada. But uh, w what it was basically was uh, the government uh, would pay the doctor twenty five dollars, twenty twenty five dollars. Uh, and uh, they could provide physiotherapy modalities to patients. Of course, the doctor's time was more valuable to uh, provide one hour of treatment for patients. So what he did and other owners of G-Code Clinics, they did, they hired their physiotherapy assistant, paid that person $10 an hour, uh, at that time $6 an hour or, or $5 was the minimum wage, so $10 was good. This is going back to 30 years ago in, in Ontario, Canada. And they paid $10 and they had 20 to 50 cubicles, like the rooms like this side that just had a table and a curtain 
uh, this physiotherapy assistant would put the patients on uh, IFC or electrical muscle therapy or tense machine and some heat pack. That's all they did and put 20 to 50 patients uh, at the same time per hour. Patient come lay down uh, and stay there in that position for one hour and then the, uh, the, the doctor build, uh, build the treatment under his own license. Uh, so he was, uh, they would make anywhere from like 200 to 400, 500 dollars an hour, which was good money. Uh, easily they were making half, my friend was making half a million dollars a year. Uh, so it was a good business. Later the government canceled that and chose a selected number of physiotherapists, gave them this license to build physiotherapy under uh, government health insurance in Ontario is called OHIP Ontario Health Insurance Plan uh, and those uh, physiotherapy clinics are very few and you have to be a certain age I forgot 60 65 years old to government covers you for hundred fifty dollars or so per year and they have a big waiting list you have to wait six months or so to get an appointment there uh, but uh, that that is gone however still in Canada and elsewhere in US, osteopathic physicians can provide manual osteopathic care and charge the government for it, the Medicaid, Medicare, OHI, whatever it is called in the, their states. But nobody does that. Over, there are over 100,000 osteopathic physicians in US and less than 1,000 of them provide um, uh, manual osteopathic care to their patients because for $20, $25 a session, it is not worth their time. They can make a lot more money doing something, something else. Uh, doing um, osteopathic manual care is time consuming and it's not financially profitable for them. Here comes you. You can easily educate these doctors, explain to them how beneficial it is for them on many aspects. Talk about what osteopathy does for chronic pain, how beneficial it is. Everybody knows chronic pain is very hard to take care of. If you tell this doctor that by hiring you, you can help his or her patients with chronic pain, you can easily get a job with them. The point is they can supervise you, you can get hired by them and work in their clinic doing manual osteopathic care and they can charge the insurance company, the government insurance company under their own license for you doing the treatment. They, the patient is under their supervision but they don't have to touch the patients. It's not required by law for them to do the treatment themselves. Their assistant can do the treatment for them and still they get paid the money. So you can see more than one patient in an hour. For example, if you do 15 minutes treatments, you can see four patients make $100 and the, uh, the physician can give you $30 as your salary and they keep the $70 for himself. Not only he will make money, also his patients have a benefit as well by uh, you getting rid of their chronic pain and they can also expand and the physician can get more patient referral as well. It's a win-win situation for them. The thing is many of the physicians don't know. Physicians in Canada and US legally are allowed to do acupuncture. They can do tense machine. They can do so many things under their own license but uh, you know they cannot there was a time in uh, after the g code clinics were removed the uh, physicians did not get involved in it because they had a cap of four hundred thousand dollar and most of them made over that so they didn't want to do this because they uh, no matter how much hours they work they reached that cap so they gave up on doing physiotherapy or manual therapy or things like acupuncture they can even do psychotherapy and other things but uh, they ignore this but in US uh, and uh, now in Canada and Europe there is no cap in many countries they don't have cap for family physicians anymore so if you work uh, as an osteopathic manual practitioner in US under their license you, you can make more money for them and you can also make a good money yourself 
and this can give you option to travel from another countries to US legally work there and have a good life but the key here is to educate these doctors right now most of them they don't know what is osteopathic manual practitioner what is manual osteopathy and how you can help their practice grow up they in, especially in US they are very competitive and they use every single ounce of marketing they can get to distinguish themselves from their competitions. They are sharks in, Can in the US compared to Canada and Europe and elsewhere in marketing. They are like gods in marketing. They are really, really good in marketing in US because they have no choice. There are so much competition going on here. They have to be smart or they get eaten alive and they cannot survive and they have to go work for somebody or close their businesses. So if you educate them, if you show them the potential of them having a chronic pain clinic how you uh, you can benefit them how financially how you can make more money for them how you can bring so many new patients how manual osteopaths get fully booked so fast in canada how they have more than 97 percent patient loyalty rate you will get a lot of customers coming to you and use your services so this is something that you can do in the US and Europe and Canada to distinguish your practice from uh, other uh, other uh, practitioners other doctors in your area that's it for today I hope you enjoyed this lecture today until next time uh, have a wonderful day namaste take care bye